My name is Rachel G. Fox, and I'm an actor. I'm a musician, and I'm a stock trader. <laughs> um, I honestly, truly love buying and selling stocks, options, commodities, pork belly futures, NASDAQ futures, you name it, I like trading it. Every morning at 5.30 a.m., I wake up to a screen, super excited, I wake up to this screen. This is the screen that I use to trade and invest in stocks. This is a trading account screen. Um, to some of you, the thought of investing or just looking at the screen in general may seem intimidating, impossible to understand, or boring. But really, understanding a screen like this is not hard. All you need is a strong work ethic and a desire to want to learn something that could possibly change your life or that you could maybe just be very passionate about. Put simply, learning to understand something that fascinates you, but also something that may be crazy complicated, is just an investment in yourself. So today I'm going to talk about how to not let anything stop you from investing in yourself. When we're deciding in our lives what it is that we want to do and who we want to become and who we are and what we like doing, the general assumption is that you fall into one of two categories. You're kind of either more of the right brain thinkers or you're more of the left brain thinkers. Um, you either love math and science class or you'd rather be covered in paint and banging on musical instruments all day. You're supposed to kind of pick and commit to and love one thing. But why? Why should we limit ourselves to just one specific set of skills when really we're all honestly capable of so much more? Or maybe we're just curious or passionate about so much more. I was definitely born loving these very right-brained kind of activities. Um, I love entertaining people and performing and being creative, but also my left brain seems to want to be very savvy with stocks and finances, and I, I have this drive to kind of want to be financially independent. Um, and people often ask me, how can you do both? How can you love these very creative activities and also be well-versed in stocks and finances? And my answer is simple. Um, it's not really about looking at the right brain and the left brain as two separate entities, but looking at them as one whole working together in all of us for ourselves. And it's not about labeling yourself as a right brain person or a left brain person, but about learning how to balance both in your own life so you can excel to your fullest capacity and so you can invest in yourself for all that you're worth, not just a part of what you're worth. So investing, acting, being a musician, or just doing whatever it is that you want to do in general can definitely be overwhelming and terrifying. I get it, I've been there, I am there, but I think the key is your perspective. If you kind of try and take everything you love, all of your aspirations and the things that you're passionate about and stick them under one label or into one box or into one niche kind of according to society, then you may actually be limiting yourself and the harder you may be making it on yourself to just do the things that your heart is telling you you really want to do. But if you look at each thing that you love individually and look at the time it takes to get there and the steps that you have to take to get where you want to be and the hours you have to work yourself, if you just look at all of that as an investment in yourself, well, now you're onto something. Investing is definitely something that seems daunting, time consuming, and risky. Um, how many of you have ever turned on CNBC, maybe excited to? understand investing or learn something new about stocks and then you, you get there and there's just this guy talking at you and you have no idea what you're listening to so you're just like let's go watch that funny video on YouTube again. I've definitely been there too but I had to push past that. Now I trade so I can just live freely and work out in the world and do what I'm passionate about regardless of if it pays or how it pays I, I don't really want to think about that. Investing is an investment in the stock market, but it's also an investment in a passion, a skill, and a lifestyle. It's an investment in yourself. When you're investing in yourself, though, there are definitely things that'll try and stop you from moving forward. For me, some of the worst were the impossible to understand, thank you, the scary, the boring, and the haters. 
When I was 15 years old, three years ago, I was on this mission to become financially independent by the time I was 18. And that's a pretty ambitious goal for someone who literally just tested out of high school. I was kind of like a high school dropout. I mean, not literally. I finished and I graduated. I just never actually went. Um, I really didn't have much experience, uh, obviously, in finance when I first started and didn't have much knowledge other than what my parents had taught me as I was growing up. And at first, it seemed impossible to understand. Um, I definitely didn't just wake up out of bed one morning and go on the CNBC, learn a few quick things, prepared to talk expertly about stocks and finances. Before I could do this, I had to break everything down and make the impossible to understand possible to understand. So where did I start? How did I do this? Well, first, I did a lot of research, and I found some kids who were about my age who were just killing it in the stock market at that time, like Brett, this 17-year-old options trader who liked trading biotech stocks, and another one named Julian who focused his portfolio on global macro investing. Biotech stocks and global macro investing? Come on. I had no idea what either of those things were. so. I had to go in and break them down and research them along with a whole other sort of stock market basics. Things sometimes, even though they may seem impossible to understand, just studying and delving deep and investing your time into the 10,000 hours that it takes will eventually make them seem possible. So after I had kind of gotten a basic understanding of the stock market, I went and did the next logical thing and opened up my own virtual trading account, and a virtual trading account is a place where you can make uh, real trades but with fake money, so it's like a practice ground. And after three months of trading in this, I was blown away with what I was able to do. I knew that if I kept investing my time into this, it could become a really cool way to be financially independent and have a cool life skill for the rest of my life, doing something that I thought was pretty interesting and just really fun. So after I had seen how amazing it was trading in this virtual trading account, I decided it was time for me to go ahead and open up my own real trading account and place my first real trade. I was still 15 at the time, but I was confident. Like, I, I thought I had it. I was really excited. I had, I had practiced. I had researched a lot. I was just excited to get going. So right after I had opened my real trading account, I had gone to this dinner party. And there was this guy there talking about the stock market. And I was like, oh, you and I, we're going to talk. I am about to start investing, and that's really cool that you invest. And um, I've been doing a lot of research on it, and I, I really am um, getting excited to place my first trade. And this guy named Jeff seemed super trustworthy and super knowledgeable. And he advised me to invest in this penny stock called Raise. <laughs> <laughs> this penny stock called Raise, which was current at the time it was trading for a dollar a share, and Jeff was like, This stock, it's gonna go to ten dollars and it can't lose. The company is strong, the stock is strong, this is gonna be great. And me being so young and naive, I was like, Oh, that's awesome, and I was so excited. So I ran home and the next morning I invested in Raise. Um, the stock didn't go to ten dollars a share. Um, but actually, it turned out to be a complete bomb trade, and not in a good way. That's raised <laughs> when I bought it, right up there, and that's raised where I sold it, down there. <laughs> yeah, that hurt a lot, and it almost stopped me from ever wanting to trade again. But then that really like competitive side of myself was like, no, we're going to take this and we're going to learn from it, and it's going to be okay, you're going to move past it. Honestly, the more you experience the things as you're doing what you want to do is, and you are experiencing things, it kind of like makes things seem less scary. Um, investing your time into experiencing both the good and the bad, because both will happen, eventually like, takes the scary away over time. Experience makes things less scary. I also learned never take a stock tip from some guy at a dinner party <laughs> named Jeff. <laughs> so at this point, I picked myself up, and I collected myself, and I moved on past this bomb of a trade, and I kept trading and learning and trading and learning. 
And about eight months into this, everything was going pretty well. Um, and I went and created Fox on Stocks. This takes me to the haters. Fox on Stocks is this cool blog site where pretty much anyone of any age can go to learn more about investing and finances and the stock market. And it's a place where I take all those very complex trading terms and all, and I break them down into more digestible, understandable, bite-sized pieces. And um, it's not a place where you go to become a trading wizard overnight or anything, but it's a place where you can go to see finance in a way that makes it seem one ounce less boring and maybe two ounces less scary. And it's cool, it's a place where I can show people that the success of your investments is not dependent on your age or your gender or the amount of starting capital that you have, but it's really only dependent on your knowledge and your thoroughness when picking investments. Fox on Stocks offered this really cre like cool outlet and a way for me to cre be creative even with finance and a way for me to chronicle everything that I was learning as I was learning it. So every day I would trade and then blog and then chronicle and tweet and trade and blog. And then Fox on Socks kind of became this brand, not overnight or anything, but people began to recognize it as a cool perspective on the stock market from a young teenager living in LA, which was awesome. And I started talking to other financial bloggers and interviewing with financial media and financial radio stations before some of the bigger ones asked me to appear on the show like CNBC and Yahoo Finance. So Fox on Socks was growing really quickly and things were going well. A lot of people really loved and appreciated what I was doing with Fox on Socks. Not everyone exactly got it. I mean, who would want to learn about finance from a teenage girl who hadn't gone to college and is just learning about it herself and writing about what I'm learning? I mean, this girl's an actress. What could she honestly know about finance? After I went on Yahoo Finance, something really cool happened. My site crashed. Not from the haters, but from this onslaught of people who were coming to check it out for themselves to see how simple finance could actually be. I mean, I think they thought, if this girl can do it, so can I. <laughs> on your path to doing whatever it is you want to be doing, you may have haters, but are you gonna care and invest in what those people think of you? Or are you gonna do what you need to do to get where you need to go because you know you were hardwired at birth to do so? Imagine what you can do for the world if you just did that. So there I was, a teenager with a blog site that started out as a personal project, hadn't gone to college, I was learning about trading as I experienced it, and yet so many people, readers and followers, could really identify with what I was doing. And as I journeyed through finance, I learned that you don't have to do just one thing, despite what your haters may think. You can do many things, despite what your haters will try and tell you. You can be a weird 18-year-old girl who likes art and music and film and, and writing and running and reading or whatever, and like finance, too. In the face of society, it's funny because I am still but probably like one of the least likely people to be standing up here talking to you about finance today. But if the idea of being right brain or only left brain were true, I wouldn't do this. This is me playing with my band, No Babies, No Bullets, and this has been one of the greatest investments of time and energy I've ever made in my whole life. And if the idea of being right brain or left brain were also true, I wouldn't do this either. This is from uh, my latest work project on the show CSI Cyber, and uh, those bugs on my face were real. I was dead, and this is something that I absolutely love doing for a living. Doing whatever it is that you love to be doing, as you're doing it, it can be terrifying and scary and intense, but actually learning how to do it can be just a pure struggle at times and in other moments boring no matter how passionate you may be about it. I remember when I was first learning the majestical powers of the instrument, the guitar, practicing the same scales and exercises over and over and over again was a little bit boring. And when I started, I couldn't obviously read a note of music. But you can't let these things stop you from investing in yourself and practicing and learning. You just have to keep practicing anyway, and it's amazing the skill that you will develop. And when you preparing for filming, it can often be kind of the same way. Um, memorizing the same 
dialogue and scripts and lines over and over and over again, while great can just be tough. But this is all part of that investment in yourself. Keep going, keep pulling through, keep making it happen, and eventually everything will come together. So what you learn as you are going towards investing in yourself and, and kind of doing all the things that you love to be doing is that haters, fear, and boredom are all your number one enemies. And as you go through it, you're likely to experience one or more of these things. The impossible to understand, the scary, the haters, the boring, or the bugs. Yeah. I definitely know how that feels. You just have to keep pushing past these things, and you have to not let any of them stop you from investing in yourself. Don't let anything stop you from investing in yourself. Don't stop trying to figure it out and really just put the pieces together so you can get where you need to go, because what a world you could actually tap into once you're there. The, the lives you can change once you're able to show what you've accomplished and what you're able to do to your fullest capacity. And don't ever let labels or stereotypes make you shy away from thinking outside the box and continuing to be clever and find new ways to invest in yourself for all that you're worth. When you see this screen, you may think of Wall Street, you may think of business major or finance major or some hedge fund guy or just how impossible it actually is to decode the screen. When I look at it, I see investing in myself, in my future. I see my right and my left brains working together to allow me to continue to be a creative actor and musician while investing in my financial stability and financial future. When you look at anything that fascinates you, a screen or anything, see the potential to invest in yourself. Thank you.